Welcome to the Nagwal Zone. I'm Anam. Today we discuss a very involved topic. Emotions and feelings and what the differences are for the Toltec warrior. Now, what anyone can just go to your favorite search engine. I hope it isn't Google. <laughs> and type in the difference between emotions and feelings and you will get many white people's psychology type articles and uh, citations and doctors have said and psychologists have said and such and such is the difference universities and you'll get all of that and you read all of that you will feel amazed at how much knowledge you have gained about these things and you will feel great right as you know by now, warriors couldn't care less about such junk if it is not useful for my life. I have no use for it, right? If it's not useful for my life, what use do I have for it? Think about that one. So instead of spending all our lives, because we are taught this in these indoctrination camps called schools, we are taught this systematically, rigorously and relentlessly to fill our minds with junk. And so because that is all that is available to us, to everyone when they're young, people then spend their entire lives filling their mind with junk because that's, that's what they were told to do. And uh, approval was gained. The more junk they fill up, the more complicated junk they fill up inside, and the better they can regurgitate, vomit it right out at a predestined time and place, they're called exams. The more approval you gain, everyone, everybody, everybody wants to rule the world, right? And people love you. Your parents love you. Your friends respect you. And uh, you feel great. And then before long, you're off. You uh, absolutely look forward to it. You put yourself under great debt, huge amounts of debt, to go to a place of higher learning, it's called, to fill yourself with even better junk. Like real, now, now we're talking real junk food for the mind, proper. And for the truly unfortunate, these people are become so brainwashed by that time that they go on to do PhDs, double PhDs. I've talked to many of these PhDs and I can assure you that in their real life, these were some of the most unhappy people you will ever meet. So obviously their PhDs didn't really work for them, did it? I met a PhD woman who had never had an orgasm in her whole life. And I felt very sad for her. She didn't know I was feeling sad for her, but I felt very sad for her. Because it was a tangible evidence of the insanity of the sheer brainwashing. But she was very proud of her PhD-ness. Uh, doctor, whatever, PhD. Yeah, but you ain't never haven't had an orgasm in your life. What a stupid person you are. Really, almost. You can say that, isn't it? Stupid in the literal sense, as in lacking functional intelligence. <laughs> so, what does this have to do with emotions and feelings? I have no idea. I was just speaking nonsense. But let's get to the topic. It took me a long while to understand the difference between these two, mainly because of the limitations of the English language in Sanskrit and Hindi, which are my other languages. And I'm sure if you are bilingual, there are other languages where these distinctions are better expressed. However, we will stick with English. And I want to illustrate the difference by first setting up a model Okay, so warriors understand this like this. On the one hand, you have emotions. And the other hand, you have feelings. In the same way, on the one hand, you have mind. 
On the other hand, you have spirit. In the middle, we can say is the body, the pipe that joins these two, allows these two to communicate, the body. The communication happens via the body. And we're setting up, it's, you know, just words and mind maps, as it were. In reality, it is just all one unending process. There's nothing called your body and your mind. It doesn't work like that. But we are making a map. Remember, maps have lines drawn on fictional land. It's all complete fiction. It does not represent the ground in any way, shape or form. You Americans are very fond of, what is it? Build the wall against the Mexicans, right? Where's the line? Which line are you going to build the wall on? The line on the map. If you take the lines away that your the the goblin politician has uh, indoctrinated you with, patriotic, you're patriotic, aren't you? So take all that away, the junk, and simply look at the ground. I I will personally wire you a lot of money if you can find that la uh, line in the ground. right? Can't find the line. So where does Mexicans end and Americans begin? Where, where, where's the line? In reality, where's the line? In the same way, we're setting up something here, but it does not exist like this. So don't let your addiction and indoctrination in the word cult fool you. Because in reality, there's no mind, body, and spirit. It is, it is, right? How do you separate waves in an ocean from the ocean and from each other? You see what I mean? So very important to really get this first. Otherwise, it becomes very difficult to understand such subtle things like feelings, emotions. You see, that's why I'm setting this up properly. Okay, so now emotions are in the realm of the mind. Feelings, warriors say, are in the realm of the spirit. And the body is the warrior's way to navigate these two phenomenons of life, of being human, right? There are other ways of perception where uh, feelings can be very tangibly felt. For example, if you were to perceive as a coyote does, your entire world would be a world of feelings. There would be no emotions in there, none whatsoever. But as a human, we have access to varying degrees of both, right? Warriors concern themselves with cultivating feelings. Emotions are a result of the feeling experience. Remember this always. That's the main difference. Emotions will arise in your mind, in, in your mental being, in, in your mind, as a result of feelings being experienced in your body or in your life, we could say. I have come across many, many, many women who uh, endowed, women are naturally, the body, the women's body is naturally endowed with a very sophisticated cognition system, way to, cog to recognize the difference between emotions and feelings. Well, I've come across many Western women, especially, who have no 
uh, sense of the clear difference between the two. And it is important that at least women who are the bearers of, the keepers of, of our humanness, you can call it that. Men are too readily converted into robots. Women, it's much more difficult because they got wombs and they got, you know, things associated with wombs. And it is uh, important that the creatures who are inherently uh, carrying, embodying the feeling uh, and the emotional aspect of human life should not be confused about these two. As, at least as far as Toltec warriors are concerned. Because I will explain to you in a bit our real um, foundational living depends on this understanding, clear understanding of where everything is, right? Feelings, let's take an example. Imagine that everyone feels angry. Imagine you're, you're feeling angry, feeling angry at something. Yeah. There's anger. That anger is in your mind. It arises in your mind. It, it is felt in your body because your ref body reflects the mind and its mental state, but it is arising in your mind. Right? Now, anger is basically, as far as everyday anger is concerned, is basically you didn't get what you wanted. That's what anger is. Think about it. Every time you were angry, you didn't get what you wanted. When children get angry, we say that throwing a tantrum. When adults get angry, you get therapy. But it was nothing more than a tantrum, was it? Really? Really? Get very honest. Very honest with yourself. But I'm angry at my family. Yeah, you didn't get something you were expecting from them. What was it? Love, acceptance, approval, whatever. Whatever your trip is on. And it's the same trip. Eight billion people are on the same trip. You didn't get what you want. That's why you're angry. So first, get clear on that. Now, below that anger is a sense of grief. sense of loss, isn't it? Below the anger is the grief. What you didn't get, which made you angry, is a sense of loss. That too is in the realm of the mind, it's not in the realm of the spirit. Now, Grief, below grief, grief will always, always arise out of a sense of betrayal. Think about it. Think about it deeply. It will always arise out of a sense of betrayal. That is why you're grieving. Because at some level, you feel betrayed. Betrayed of what? What, what you wanted. <laughs> it was snatched away from you. I just described people's experience when someone dies. But it was all about you. It's got absolutely nothing to do with the dead person. They're dead. They're gone. You got nothing to do with that person at all. But all you're crying and you're, and you're huffing and puffing through life now, whatever you're doing to deal with all that, right? Fine, do whatever you need to do. But far too many people make it a personal Disney movie. It's their ongoing uh, uh, Netflix TV series now. Just because someone's dead. It gives them an, a, a reason now to manufacture mind stuff constantly. 
And they think that they're in the realm of feeling, not, not at all, you're living in the realm of emotions. Something was taken away from you and you're manufacturing basically a, a sophisticated tantrum. It sounds very simplistic and someone can say, oh, but you don't understand. And yeah, yeah. Think about it yourself. There's no other way to cut this cake. Really, think about it. And I'd love to know. If you have any other way to cut this cake, I would love to hear it. Right? Now, <laughs> that betrayal that you're feeling, my son died too early in life, or God took him from us, or whatever the trip is people are on. It's death. People die. Get over it, man. In your own time. In your own time. But you need to get over it. Okay? Death is happening. It's happening. So is life. But the problem is you're so removed from death and so addicted to the culture of youth and immortality that death is the big tragedy for you. The big. And you know why you, you know why a lot of times people do this? Because they think they're supposed to. Everyone else is doing it. Or what will they think if I don't grieve properly? They will think I'm hard-hearted. Yeah. Yeah, let, let's, let's operate. Let's get into the... Yeah. That's where you're at. Now, betrayal. You know where that comes from? Because you miscalculated. All bit sense of betrayal comes from miscalculation, lack of strategy, and the worst one of them all, the pet project of the average man, hoping and wishing. Hoping and wishing that she will not betray me. Hoping and wishing, like a gambler, that uh, he will not betray me. I will never experience betrayal, fidelity. We shall be of fidelity together forever. Here's a metal, round metal thing you can insert in your finger, which then signifies this uh, idiotic agreement. Betrayal. It's miscalculation. You have no clue about emotions and feelings and how they actually work in real life. And you're living your life up here. I just described marriage, by the way. Warriors have nothing to do with all of this. And I'll explain to you why the warriors take on this actually makes sense and will make sense to you. You will see. You will see. And all of this, you don't have to take my word for it. Verify for yourself. Go within. Journey. Take 10 years to journey into all this and gain your own wisdom about it. And you will see. You'll come to the same conclusions. You'll come to the, you will have the same experiences. You will see that, oh, okay, a lot of it is mind junk. If I, if, if I was a warrior, it wouldn't be worth much for me. Right? So let's, let's go right back. We live our lives lacking in proper calculation because we're not taught the proper things in order to be able to calculate in a smart way or lack of strategy in life again we're not taught what are viable strategies to live a happy healthy life of uh, great well-being and wisdom we're not taught that we are taught x square plus y square equals z square sine theta who know do you know what sine theta is cos theta sine theta White people are fucking insane, right? So these, and then the worst one, hoping and wishing. The gambler's uh, best friend, hoping and wishing. Out of these three comes, inevitably, they will lead to a sense of betrayal. Right? You will have life experiences where you will feel betrayed. That betrayal will lead to grief, a sense of loss. That grief is 
going to come out as anger. Those are the layers. And all of it because you didn't get what you wanted. <laughs> really, think about it. You didn't get what you wanted. What was it? You wanted her love forever and ever? Oh dear, she had sex with someone else. What are you going to do now? Oops, you miscalculated. And through all those layers, now you're angry and raging. You're going to drink and beat her up because you're such a big man. Right? Now here's the warrior side of this. So pay attention. Let's stop with this nonsense. Look at the warrior side of this. Warriors are concerned with three major things. Presence. It'll take you three, four years just to know what the hell this word even means. What does it mean to be present? All my apprentices, everyone I've ever had and will have and have right now, solid group at the moment, all of them are put on presence work straight away. None of them come in with any clue whatsoever what it, what it is. I have one apprentice who has actually done a, a, like apprenticeship of a sort with a Zen master or a self-proclaimed Zen master. I'm sure he was a master of Zen. <laughs> But he's now starting to understand, the apprentice is now starting to understand what uh, being present actually means in real life. Not in a freaking temple somewhere or in some dojo or whatever they call their presence areas. You see? So just that is going to take you a very long time. So don't miscalculate, lest you have anger and frustration about it <laughs> later. Warriors are concerned with power. This is a well-known one. Toltec warriors go and hunt power, healthy power, power that leads towards well-being, not the bullshit power that uh, is stuffed down your throat with these Bollywood and Hollywood movies and superheroes and romance and power over. We're not talking about power over. We're talking about power with. Now, uh, and that should ideally lead to a warrior uh, experiencing great success in their life. These are the things the warrior is concerned with. How does it lead, how, how is this concerned with feelings? Because you, a sense of power is a feeling within you. You feel powerful. On the other side, you can feel weak in a situation. Not physically weak, like don't have any energy. I'm talking about in your spirit, you can feel weak, inadequate. Men, you know this. Because almost every single one of you is terrified of women. At the real core of it. And I challenge you to look within. You're terrified of women. Power is a feeling. Warriors cultivate it. We even have a concept in the Toltec system, the mood of a warrior. It has to do with this feeling of power, genuine feeling, not just convincing oneself of some, uh, you know, thug life type of deal. Genuine, quiet power. Right? The feeling of being present alert, vibrantly alert and there, available in each moment. That's a feeling a and an experience, obviously, right? But it is not an emotion. Being present is not an emotion. It is much closer to a feeling. When we are present, truly present, there's a feeling of calmness which is also you can say an experience but you see uh, the spirit and feelings are very close together because feelings come out of the experience of the spirit success is a feeling it's not an emotion is it i 
feel successful. It's a feeling. You won some big award or you got your PhD. You're going to feel successful. <clears throat> this is the different difference. Anything that arises out of your spirit, that's a feeling. And you want to cultivate those feelings. <clears throat> it is an active thing you can do. You can cultivate the feeling of success. What would you rather do with your life? Go to a therapist and deal with your anger or take that same energy and put it to work, cultivating the feeling of success by giving yourself successful life evidence. What would you rather do? Would you rather treat your depression? It's genetic. It's in the blood. What, what, it's, it's, a, it's a chemistry thing. No, it's your fucking attitude. That's what it is. No, no, you don't understand. Yeah, 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 I do understand. You can either turn it around in your own time, but time's a wasting. Right? You can stop the bollocks, turn it around and get on with it. It takes the same amount of energy. This is what Toltec warriors contend. This is why it's not easy to listen to warriors speak. It takes the same amount of energy every day. You got 24 hours just like me and everyone else. And you got that much amount of energy just like me and everyone else. You can either invest in being depressed. Or you can get the fuck off that sofa. Switch off your TV. Throw away your fucking popcorn. Stop eating junk. And put that energy to good use in cultivating feelings of success. Plenty of others have done it. You can do it too. Plenty of others. Right now, there are people in this world right now overcoming weakness, depression, bad habits and moving powerfully towards victory in themselves. You too, you can join that club. Yeah. All this, you can say that I'm being theatrical in order to make a point, which is stick with what is valuable to the spirit and don't bother yourself with what is valuable to the mind. If you cannot put your mental stuff to work, to go to work for your spirit, I can promise you that you will not be moving towards personal well-being at the very least. I promise you this. But if you can, if you can put your emotions to work, anger, jealousies and all the petty nonsense, Put it to work. It's just energy, wasted energy up here. Put it to work. To cultivate your spirit. Make it strong, resilient, healthy, robust. A feeling of well-being. Right? Well-being is not in motion, is it? Happiness is. But, oh dear, happiness comes and goes. She loves me. We are getting married. Oh no, she slept with someone else. I am a poor sod. What a stupid way to live, right? So let's get out of that nonsense and move towards your spirit. Cultivate your spirit. Nothing's going to be given to you as an entitlement in this regard. Absolutely nothing. You're going to have to decide, make a choice, what is important to you. If it's important to you to be petty, jealous, envious, uh, sad, depressed, angry, happy. If happiness is what you're chasing, I just want to be happy. Yeah, well, then be happy then, isn't it?
Who's stopping you? I've got too many problems. Fine, overcome them. Be happy. Is that what you want? But you want to chase all this? Good. Do something. At least do something. But I promise you, you'll be wasting your time and you'll live a very shallow life. You'll be a very shallow person. You want to gain some real depth, dignity inside you. Dignity is a feeling. It's not an emotion. And you want to live a life of dignity. You want to feel dignified. You don't want to feel like a prostitute. I promise you this. And I come across far too many women and men who are literally prostitutes, just prostituting themselves to everything and anyone. Because that's what you're taught from the beginning. What do you think exams are for children? It's an approval of prostitution. That's all it is. So everyone's taught prostitution at an early age. No one's taught and at the cost of personal dignity. Warriors, as you know, flip it right around and our priorities are very different than the average man's priorities. What is important to the average man? Anger issues, I gotta go to the therapist. The warrior will never waste time like that. They will just come up with a strategy, rituals, little rituals throughout the day that keeps siphoning that anger energy into cultivating the spirit. There's countless ways to do that. Now, what I'd like you to do is put in the comments below some ways that you feel are effective to take all the energy that is being uh, bounced around in the mind and going nowhere and creating dis-ease for you in life, how can you siphon it, channel it, encourage it, let it flow into working for your spirit to cultivate yourself, your dignity, your success, your well-being? And what are the ways you have discovered to do this? And if, you, if this is new information to you, what occurs to you that would be effective in your life to do this, right? So on that note, I would love to hear from you in the comments. I will see you next week. Walk in freedom, farewell.